Casey's going to be training across country on her way here in the next <laughs> few weeks. So <laughs> you can see if you can catch her at any of the stops. <laughs> and let us know what you think we could be more mediocre like a man at. <laughs> My eyes can't read the numbers on the recorder anymore. I mean, you probably need um, glasses. glasses. You know, there was a time when, not to brag, but my optometrist told me... Optometrist? Yeah, that's right. That's what that's called. My optometrist told me that my vision was better than perfect. Yeah, because you can be like 20-20, but then you can be like... I had like 20 have that, Yeah, 2010 yeah. or 25 or whatever. Yeah. Um, mine was always the worst. So <laughs> that was always had, where I was. You had little glasses when you were a little kid. I, yeah, well, the glass, I mean, I wore, they were big glasses and I couldn't see anything ever. And then I got that surgery and that's the whole story. But Lace, LASAC it, surgery. Not LASIK, LASAC. <laughs> Honey, she didn't get LASIK. She got LASIK, um, which is actually a thing. And then now I kind of do need reading glasses myself. So I'm going to like think about it. These are All just right. fashion glasses right just here. Just fashion glasses, which I yeah. do sometimes just wear a fashion glass because this is I a less fun eyes. fact than, than bragging about having perfect vision. But I do like feeling air on my eyeballs because of like the um, autoimmune thing is it's too much for me. Are you fucking kidding me? Is that why I, is that what I, is that what I have? <laughs> Probably. It's always been such a fucking nightmare. That's why I wear fashion glasses and people don't understand. And before that, honestly, my contacts oh, acted as that. Yeah. And then after I had, after I had the surgery, I was like constantly, I felt like the air on my eyes was like an assault. Yeah. And I was, that's why I was like, I was always wearing sunglasses. And then I got into fashion glasses and people would make fun of me. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. I need the barrier. Yeah. But I didn't know that it's connected to autoimmune shit. I think it is because like, that's one of my pain points, like with the Ellers, Dan Lowe's, we were just talking about this this week. So I'm already, we're not going to do that thing where Busy's going to pretend to be surprised by what I'm talking about, (laughs) that exercise, that acting exercise that we do, because we've already talked about this. But one of my pain points with Ehlers-Danlos, which is like, it's a very unstudied condition, I think. Um, You know, it took forever to figure out that that was what was going on with me and probably like other people in my family. And so every time I bring up some symptom or whatever, like you're very lucky to have a doctor that's like, yeah, it probably is part of all this shit or whatever. But one thing that happens to me repeatedly is that I get like a flare up in my tear ducts, um, Mm. which is what's going on with me currently. I get like a swollen glands inside my mouth and always immediately following that the skin in my mouth peels off <laughs> this is disgusting Disgusting. and then i get like a a really painful burning tear duct usually on one side the same side where my mouth peeled anyway um but i Wild. think it's because like it just gives me like really sensitive eyes so maybe that's what's happening with you too but a goggle <sighs> goes a long way for me yeah i mean i I don't know if we need to commit to goggles, but I definitely <laughs> will wear a fashion glasses moment. Um, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I need, I feel like I need a goggle because I need the band that goes around my head to hold it on. Casey, because don't, I also not, have like, don't, no. I also have the floppy soft nose and floppy soft ears that don't really hold up glasses. So. Yeah. I've got, everybody knows I have the hardest nose around. <laughs> so. I'm just miserable trying to keep glasses on my face. So I'm like, I'm just going to put on a full ski goggle at this point. And even though I would never ski, I will wear a ski goggle, I guess, to protect my little eyes from this harsh, harsh world. It's really interesting. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. How are you? I'm okay. There's been some horrible 
tragedy, like in at the cricket school, which is like it's made news, and I don't know if it's made national news. Ow! Oh my god, I just punched myself in the face with my microphone. Wow. Sorry. Um, I don't know if it's made national news, but it certainly has been everywhere here. But um, our crossing guard was murdered on oh Sunday god. night on the subway in like a random act of violence and he was just trying to help um like de-escalate a fight that Aww. he was not involved in at all Aww. between two strangers I'm so and sorry. he was i know i'm gonna cry he was the nicest kindest man and he's worked at the school that my kids have gone to since we moved in new york he's worked there over 10 years but it's like there aren't it's not, it's just one, like basically it's just like, there's one crossing guard. <laughs> Do right, you know what I mean? Right, like yeah. he's just always been there and he's like the first person you see in the morning and all the kids love him and say hi. And he was just the kindest, sweetest, most helpful guy. I always made sure to like say hi to him. And he was just always, always had like a smile and like, hey, how's it going? And just, um... Really, really so sad. And I had to tell Cricket last night and she was very upset. Ugh. And the kids at school are all, you know, writing letters and stuff. And I was going to write his family a, a note and drop it off. The school's collecting them. And there's like, of course, like a 10th grader started a GoFundMe last night for his wife and children and grandkids and I just like I don't know it was it's just so senseless and feels so hard yeah oh I'm sorry it's so sad it's like that kind of that kind of shit that kind of violence like Out of nowhere, so senseless. Right. Just like a guy trying to get home after watching football with his friend and just like trying to just have these other guys cool it on the train. Right. And his, I mean, it's just fucking terrible. Oh my God. Anyway, I, the thing I guess, you know, I was thinking about our talk with Rabbi Browse, you know? Yeah. And, I was thinking about like Richie, the our crossing guard Richie. Yeah. And I was thinking like I hope he I think he did. Like I hope he knew how adored he was by all the like by all the kids and families and how much everyone valued what he did for the kids at the school. Yeah. You know, like keeping them safe and yeah. looking out for us. And like the school is like a relatively new school. Obviously we've, we've only been there what, like four, four years, almost yeah. four years, three and a half. Um, but he had been there, like I said, over a decade. And the last year was the first graduating senior class of kids who'd been there since kinder. Okay. You know, because, yeah. you know, like they roll when they start schools, like you roll the yeah thing, right? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, my yeah, brain yeah. hurts. Okay. Um, and the head of the school sent an email last night and was just like talking about what an important part of the school he was. And, uh, and re relayed this like anecdote or story that last year when those kids were graduating, he asked if he could be invited to the graduation to see the kids that he Aww. had known since they were babies graduate. Yeah. I mean, Ugh. well, it clearly takes a special, you always know that someone doing a job like that is a special person because it's not an easy job. 
No, you get like honked at by like Uber drivers and like... Yeah, you're dealing with all kinds of personalities, including like the families that you're working with to like the public who you're trying to protect these kids with. And I remember when I had Eli and someone told me like the best parenting advice they ever got was never leave your kid where you wouldn't leave a million dollars, you know, which I was like, I mean, mm. that's just a, the figure that they put on it. But yes, it it just drove home to me how much you always have to trust the person who is taking your kid out of your hands, even if it's to like walk across the street to their school. So it takes a really special person because like, You don't make a million dollars being a school crossing guard. No, you don't. You have to do it because you love the the job and the kids and you love the people, all the people. So I always try to think of like what a special person, someone doing a job like that has to be when they're, you know, doing this very public facing job where you don't. You probably don't get the most deep interactions with people, but it's right. such an important job. And especially when it comes to kids who, like, I don't know if people remember being a kid that age, but for me, like, every day was like a fresh slate of anxiety, just wondering, like, what that day was going to bring. So to have someone that I regularly saw making sure I got across the street safely and like wishing me a good day, that that would be, you know, that would be something that I wouldn't forget as a kid. I'm really sorry to hear about Richie. I know, me too. I hope you will um, share the GoFundMe for his family so that people can contribute a couple bucks if they are able. Yeah. Was- Not that, you know, it doesn't, no, it doesn't even but, begin. Ugh. It doesn't even begin. But no, I if know, anyone's but, ever had a great crossing guard or bus driver or whoever, you know, the people that work in and around a school that aren't necessarily teachers, like we talk a lot about teachers and what they deserve. But man, I remember being in elementary school one time and uh, I fully barfed, like an anxiety barf, like in my classroom. And uh, I felt so bad because obviously I felt so bad, but I just remember the custodian coming (laughs) and like, I, he let me watch the whole thing. Like the teacher cleared the whole classroom out because everyone was screaming like, ah, she barfed. And, uh, but for whatever reason, maybe I don't, I don't even know, maybe to like sequester me (laughs) from the rest of the kids who are like, having a big drama that I barfed, but whatever reason, I was in the classroom and he was like showing me like, oh, it's not that bad. Because I kept saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And uh, he was like, no, you like put down sawdust and then you scoop it all up and you tie it in a bag and then I'm going to like mop the floor and then it'll be like, it never happened. It's no big. And I was like, (laughs) I'm going to cry myself. He was such a nice older man. I didn't even know his name, but I'm like, how many uh, piles of barf does this guy go around scooping up? Every scooping day? up. <laughs> but it was so caring. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear about. I know. Me too. But, I was like, yeah. And it was, yeah, it was just, it's just, and I didn't tell, okay. And I didn't tell Birdie because she went back right. to school in Sweden for now, for the time right. being. We'll see yeah. how long yeah. she lasts. Yeah. Um, but I didn't tell Birdie because I just felt like she just got back. She just started right. class again. And I just didn't want one more. I mean, I just, it's just so, he he really was such a present. He was the, like, like you said, like the first person you saw when you got yeah. to school. Yeah. In the morning for all, for everyone, for all the kids, for all the adults who were walking their kids to school or, or yeah. dropping their kids off. And sometimes I would walk by during the day and I would see him out there and I'd be like, how's it going? You know, like yeah. he was just a good presence in the neighborhood. And like, I just, I did, I felt like he, he really kept the kids safe. Like he was, yeah. he felt like a safe person, Yeah, you know? 
Yeah. And it's also like so unbelievably tragic that he was killed because he was just trying to have two guys on the subway chill out with their... He was doing what he did. He like was that, doing what he did. And that was what and he I, was about, clearly. Yes, and I fucking hate that that's the world that we live in, you know? Yeah. It's just... Ugh. His poor wife and their kid just sucks. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. And I remember my crossing guard in Chicago when I was like a baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know. Wow. I never really dealt with a crossing guard in Arizona, though, because I just didn't. I just didn't cross any streets. You were on your own. Yeah. I never, I, a crossing guard was something I was only familiar with because of television, because I grew up in a really rural area. And so you were at the mercy of whoever your bus driver was. And yeah, like that was, your, we had a bus driver, but that, yeah. Yeah. And the the bus driver character in The Simpsons, I feel like whoever came up with, that character really observed some bus drivers that I possibly had growing up. But I also had some great ones. I also had some great, great bus drivers. Um, but yeah, all these people who do these jobs where we're just sending our kids, trusting, and, you know, and and everything else. You know, we, we've talked about this before. Like, you know, the person that takes your ticket to get into the movies, like that's the person that has an eye on everyone that's coming into the theater. And, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't think it's like a big deal job, but it it could be a big deal job, you know? It's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I also was thinking about our conversation with Rabbi Sharon because I had such a, like, I had so many of both things, like, in the last several days because Mean Girls did so well. And yes, congratulations. The number on the one big, movie in the world. The big weekend. It's a big deal. Do you know that? I don't, th I've never been in the number one movie in the country ever. I've only oh, been in the wow. number one comedy, but I've never, you know, like, yeah, movies. The movies that I've been in have opened as like the number one comedy in America. Right. Um, but not like the number one movie. Yeah. And that was very exciting for me. Yes. That's really exciting. And also exciting was everybody's like reaction to me <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> yeah. And it feeling like really nice. That was really yeah. like it's been really nice. Yeah. Um, but then on the flip side, even before I heard this like actual very tragic news about uh, Mr. Ritchie, um, Bertie went back to Sweden. Yeah. And Mark escorted her back and had a very chill 36 hours, <laughs> like, 17 of which were on airplanes. <laughs> and so that was like kind of hard. Sorry, yeah. I just blew my nose, guys. Um, so that's been kind of hard and a little bit conflicting. And, you know, just trying to like figure it all out. Right. Um, so then I went to a really fun party. Nice. On, on Sunday night. Nice. And that was really fun. Um, and then... But I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, you know, I guess, yes, I'm trying to like, I'm very grateful, I'm trying to hold those things. I'm trying to be like, it's okay to be conflicted about the bird going back to school. Well, it is. I mean, it, it, like, if you didn't feel conflicted about it, I'd be more worried. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yes, yeah. I'd be like, what's going on. Um, but part of it too is just that, yeah, I mean, I think that Mark and I now have moved into a new place in terms of Birdie being there, which is like 
I'm feeling right now like I can't believe she went back. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like given everything that's gone yeah. on. Do you sure. know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's been not a usual time. Right. Um, spe- sp- like specifically for her, you know, and right. this school year has been so tough from the, from the jump. Like she, you know, Kate passed away like four days after she started school. Right. And that was really hard for her to not be with me and not be here. And, um, and then of course, like the seizures and everything, but she's, uh, the seizure and the hospital stay and the, I mean, just a lot. So I'm Mark and I are like in a place now and we're sort of just trying to say this to her, which is like, if she makes it through the school year and stays there, fantastic. But if it gets, if she feels like she needs to come home, that's okay too. Like I'm, you know, like we're, it's no pressure. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I mean, what even is school? I don't Well, that's, wait. So Mark and I have been having this <laughs> real conversation and I'm so yeah. curious about like, um, other parents of kids out there who are school age because our feeling is like post pandemic. Uh, we literally are like, what are you guys doing? You're trying to make them learn algebra. What the fuck? Who cares? Right. Stop it. Right. Oh, they have I, to, they have to be proficient in geometry. <laughs> okay. What? I just always felt like, well, here's the honest truth. Like, and I don't think he'll mind, but Eli had some learning differences going to school, and it was a real challenge. And we were constantly being called into school to talk about it. And I was, and I have the, again, like we were just talking about it, utmost respect for teachers. But the thing is, is like teachers are dictated to like what they have to teach and how they have to teach it. And they can only be so creative, like in modern day school, public school setting, especially. And so it was hard because I was like, listen, I know my kid is smart. I know he is like, there's, that's not even a question. It's just that like a teacher can't do a little side quest specifically catering to my one kid and the way that he learns or what he needs. And so he was sort of like falling through the cracks, even in this really good school and really good school system. And it was difficult and it was frustrating for him too, to like constantly feel like he was failing, not at school, but like failing at what was expected of him when it just wasn't how he worked, you know? So, like, I used to have this thing that I would say to him, and I would be like, you know, school is like a bicycle factory, and they make really great bicycles there, but the thing is, you're not a bicycle. You're a violin. It's different. So they're not going to make a great violin at that bicycle factory. No. Um, But it's that's where you are. And so I wanted to, like look into like homeschooling him or finding an alter. We couldn't really like afford to put him in some kind of like wildly experimental, you know, uh, private school thing, private school. But I thought that like, we probably could have saved him some heartache by homeschooling him. But the rub was that he was such a social kid. He really was the mayor of every school that he went to. So where he wasn't doing so great, like sitting at his desk and like learning what he was supposed to learn all the time, Mm -hmm. he was the most social and most friendly and knew every teacher. And like they'd be the one, they'd send him on an errand because he would be like so reliable doing something like that. So he didn't want to give up that aspect of school. And he was like, it's worth it to like struggle through the academic part of it to have the social part of it. Well, he is so similar to Bernie. You know, yeah. we've discussed like yeah. we should get their brains. We should start like a study of just them. <laughs> Um, but they are so, so similar because yeah. it's the same with Bird. And like, you know, I remember when I was talking about that, like parent teacher conference we had last year with the teacher that like fully got 
Bernie's brilliance and like where her brain is just like unlike other people's in the greatest way ever. Yeah. Um, what is sort of difficult for us is that like, yeah, where do those kids go? Right. Because it's like, that's great. That was one teacher. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and like, and, and especially in, we've now realized like this, this school year in Europe, like this kind of program, like they're not very interested in your individuality. You know what I mean? They're just right. like, this is the program. This is what you do. Like the teachers don't really have like a vested interest in the kids as people. Right. It seems like, like it right. just sort of is like, like the house parents do, like they're more nurturing and all that. But like, it really does feel like the school is just, the school itself is just very much like, this is school. You do this. You do your work. You go right. home. Right. You yeah. do your homework. That's it. Which and in a way is like needs possibly like, a good lesson for it, a human being. Sure. It just doesn't work for, like, Bernie's right. like Eli and that like, she needs, honestly, in order to really like want to even do well in especially things she's not that interested in, yeah. she needs to like feel compelled by the teacher and yeah. like by a personal connection with the teacher right. and feeling like she wants to do well for them. Anyway, all of this to say, we're sort of like a couple things. We sort of feel like shrug emoji about school in general post pandemic yeah. like we're just like i'm like i don't even know what the fuck it is like yeah. what why we're insisting these children you know when it's like i want them to just work on their mental health and well-being and like yeah be good citizens and yeah anyway that's number one number two is that it's pretty clear that like this particular type of educational thing is not really Bertie's vibe, like yeah. this way of teaching. Yeah. So I don't know if the program like and but it's also a bummer because she like does the things that she loves there. She really she has made really great friends. Yeah. She like loves the community at the school. She loves like the school stuff, like school spirit stuff or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever that stuff is. Yeah. She likes being in Europe. She likes all of the things that have been, that she's been learning about. Yeah. Like cultural differences. She does not love a lot of the food, guys. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> well, but it'll, anyway. either way, it'll be a good experience. Totally. For Birdie, like, here's what I liken it to. And I'm talking so much about Eli and not a lot about Lincoln. Lincoln certainly had his own experiences, but he has like also that very unique, like pandemic college, high school experience where it's like nothing is traditional anymore and you just have to do what works for you. But when Eli was like 13, I think he was looking for a summer job and he saw on some like a literal bulletin board somewhere that this company was looking for like summer employees or whatever. And so he said, I think it's like an office. So I'm going to like put a suit on. Will you drive me to this office? He and fully at 13 was don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Yeah, exactly. He went to this office. It was a PR firm. He met with the head of the PR firm and she was like, oh, I'm sorry that the little bulletin that you saw didn't specify. We were actually looking for like people who are college graduates or maybe people who are in college studying to be PR professionals. To It's basically like a paid internship. And he was like, oh, okay, well, thanks for doing this interview with me and like respecting me, even though I showed up at age 13 in a suit and it was nice to meet you and this was interesting. <laughs> and so he was like, you know, laugh, so. no, no harm, no foul. But then like a couple weeks later, that woman called him and she was like, you know what? I haven't really met any applicants that I liked better than you. Do you want to come work at this PR firm this summer? And so he was like, okay. And so he went and his job was to do all of the things that an intern does, like, you know, whatever interns do, making copies and things like that. But he was like, but sometimes they ask my ideas about like products and stuff and, you my know, 
And so, of course, he's just like, yeah, here's what I think about that shampoo. And here's what I think people are looking for in shampoo. And he really kind of like weirdly thrived in that environment, which I was like, oh, my God, are you going to like drop out at of school at age 14 and become like a PR or advertising person? And he was like, no, it actually like... It was an interesting experience for me because what it taught me was that even though I really like being praised for like what I'm doing and told that like I'm doing a good job, which there was plenty of in that environment, and even though I kind of liked the creative aspect of the work, I do not like being stuck in an office all day. And so that, like the praise and the creativity did not make up for the panic I felt walking amongst cubicles all day. So I know that that is something that I should probably never do. I should probably never sign on for that. So it was a good experience, but it it wasn't like all the way in Europe either. It was in like Norwalk, Connecticut, and it was only for a summer. It wasn't for like an entire school year, but... He did learn from it, and I think Birdie will learn from it regardless of, like, what the takeaway is. I think she'll have some... She'll know more about herself at the end of it, whatever the outcome is. I mean, that's just, like, I guess what we're all supposed to do all the time. Yeah, because, like, do you literally remember more than five things from high school other than, like, things that taught you more about who you were? No. Like... I don't remember any mathematical formulas. I remember like two lines of Shakespeare. I remember zero history without having to look it up and confirm it. I have like very rusty Spanish, but I remember the things that taught me who I was and the kind of person that I wanted to be and, you know, the kind of person that I could have been. So that that's... That's what it's all for, I think. You can get an education at the public library for zero dollars in your own time. Well, that's, I mean, if the libraries aren't all closed. That is true. That is true. But you know what I mean? Like, uh, the, but you really can't. All this information is out there and it's available to whoever wants it. So, you know, I think the the real privilege and the real benefit to any of this is like the social... And, like, self-discovery part of it, which she'll get regardless of of whatever it is. So, as long as it's not, like, hurting her. <laughs> well, yes, we hope not. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be good. She's She's sharp. No, I know. I know. I just am, like, yeah. It's been a long, it's, it's a long a journey. And you, here's what I will say is that you all have devoted a lot of time and thinking and emotional, like to even consider sending your kid to Europe and then figuring out how to do it. And then, you know, it's, it's been all consuming for you as a parent and it's, and you've really both given your all to doing it and you've been yes. back and forth and visits and you know yeah and so to consider yeah. that it might all like wind up being a wash I'm sure is a lot it is and also I'm like at this point I'm like I don't even know like what is anything you exactly. know exactly I guess is a little yeah. bit how I feel yeah oh for ya girl. You know, guys, I know that we've talked about it, but if you haven't listened (laughs) to the ads before, here's what I need you to know. That the best sex of your life is with Foria, period. That's it. End of sentence. (laughs) That's That's it. We've been talking about Foria for so long because guess what? Still great. Still great. Still love it. it. I gift it to people all the time. It's like one of my go-to gifts for girl and guy friends. But really, Foria was was made, the products were made to help women and people with vulvas fully experience sexual pleasure, heightened orgasms, more sexual comfort. They have their best-selling Awaken Arousal Oil, which is the ultimate pleasure pregame. It's like organic botanicals that enhance arousal and sensitivity and pleasure and access to orgasm and can help with any discomfort or dryness or anything. 
the sex oil, the awaken arousal oil together is the perfect gift for a friend, but it's also such a gift for yourself. Because if you have had sex before and you know that you like it, imagine that the best sex of your life is still ahead of you. I'm envious if you've never tried it. I am too, actually. I think it's great. Because also you're like, I don't need any help in the bedroom. Like, I'm good. Like, we're good. And I get that. And you don't need, I'm not saying you need help. I'm saying it's just going to be fucking mind blowing. (laughs) You deserve mind blowing sex. You deserve mind blowing. And even if you're like, I have mind blowing sex. Okay, fine. Now you're bragging. And (laughs) and I feel like it's a little rude. And I'm also here to tell you that it's going to go over the top. It's like one of those, um, it's like one of those like, uh, AI memes that like gets progressively more insane. You know, have you seen those where they're like, AI, make a picture of um, like a girl, a horse girl who likes riding horses, but make it more horses, more love of horses. And then at the end, it's just like some girl like exploding in the (laughs) intergalactic ether with like horses and stardust around her. Like that's what we're talking about here. Like you could be having the best sex in your life and I'm telling you, Foria is going to make it better, especially that awaken arousal oil and the sex oil. And look, the, 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 February, the love holiday is coming up. You got to get, and if you don't have somebody to love on you, you're going to love on yourself. So you got to get it. Okay. For your health. For your health, for everybody's health. You have (laughs) our permission to try it. We fully endorse you to go ahead, treat yourself to more deeper, fuller pledge wherever you can find it. And as often as possible, you should start with a bottle or two or three, of Foria. Foria is offering a special discount deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash best or use code best at the checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash best for 20% off your first order. Casey and I recommend trying the Awaken Arousal Oil and the Sex Oil. You're going to thank us. Honey love, honey love, honey love, honey love. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that song is, but I like it. It's a good one. People, listen, I have a New Year's resolution for you. It's very easy to keep. This year... Stop wearing uncomfortable bras. Stop being like, ow, something's poking my rib. (laughs) Just throw it out. Take it off wherever you are. Throw it out. Throw it out. (laughs) Support for today's episode comes from, you guessed it, Honey Love. Yeah, because support for today's boobs comes from Honey Love too. That's right. Support. (laughs) Support that's not painful, that's delightful. Is coming from Honey Love all across the board. Honey Love has revolutionized the bra game. So you no longer have to deal with uncomfortable underwire without sacrificing support. You like will see and feel the difference. Their bras are very comfortable. You're not going to take them off. I love the crossover bra. That's the one that you know. You've seen, I guarantee you, you've seen this Honey Love crossover bra. And the reason why people are so eager to post pictures of themselves in it is because the bra itself looks hot and cute. It looks hot. And no while, underwire, which is amazing. While also being so incredibly comfortable. And looks it's, great under a t-shirt. Yeah. Anyway, they're also more than just bras. They have really comfortable shapewear and leggings and tanks for everyday support. Like, guys, I don't know what to tell you. You got to try it. You got to try it to believe it. Yeah. You got to believe, you got to feel it to believe it. And once you feel it, you're going to be like, whoa, it's kind of incredible. Plus, whether you're going on a date or out with friends or you have a special dress that you want good shape under, Honey Love makes the perfect undergarments. Perfect. Also, Agreed. they're easy to get off. So if you are on a date, you don't have to worry about it being awkward. You know what I mean? Yes. I you, do not like to feel like no. I'm going to pass out in the middle of any social event. And I don't like to... I don't like to get all sweaty pulling them on to begin no. with. I don't like to sweat out my hair. So no. with Honey no. Love, none of this is a problem. It's not and a problem. I, 
I know you all know what I'm talking about because I know you've all lived through it. So I'm we here have to all tell lived you, through honey, it. love is uh, all of the snatchedness with none of the struggle. Yes, I love that. <laughs> The products make you look good and feel good. So treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash best 20. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash best 20. After you purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. And you know what you can do? You can support our show and tell them that we sent you. And we would love that. And you're (laughs) going to love your new shapewear or a bra or both. So start the new year with confidence. Thanks to Honey Love. Um, I feel, yeah, it's snowing here. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, goodness. I'm glad it's snowing there. It's what it's supposed to be doing, I guess. Yeah, I'm glad it's, like it's kind of rain now. I don't know. Hot and tell. sunny. No, it's definitely not hot and sunny. Um, I have like a stuffy sinus situation. I, I had know. too much fun, I think, on Sunday night. You had too much fun? Yeah. And then I, what like, was the party that you went to? You don't have to say exactly, but... It was a birthday party for somebody that I met through a friend. And so I didn't really know a lot of people there, which was kind of fun. Oh, good. That's good. But yeah, it was good. Um, but yeah, so I feel a little like head coldy. Oh, I was supposed to get a colonoscopy tomorrow, but I'm postponing it a week because of the sinus. Right. Slash cold. He was like, even though it's different ends, you don't need to different ends, but you're still like, I don't know. You're put under, I don't know. Yeah. You want to like be able you to be in, in tip top shape. I think so a little bit. <laughs> um, but I did go to this gastro last week for like just my stomach issues and how, I've been how I was so sick, but I told you, like, I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast, but he was like, his theory, which I feel like I'm going to go with, is just that whatever it is that's going on, like, I was like, my intestines, my track, my GI yeah. was, was like really upset in December by whatever it was that I got, like whether it was like foodborne bacteria infection or some kind of like stomach flu or whatever it was. Right. I just got like out of whack from that and I've sort of never recovered from it a little bit and I've just felt like it's just been gross. But that's what he thinks it is. It's like exacerbated my like IBS, autoimmune, all of it. I feel like I want to do like, uh, I think I talked to you about this, but I feel like, I don't know if I talked on the podcast about it. I feel like I want to do like uh, some sort of anti-inflammation couple week program of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where you just like get your, I'm like clearly inflamed, (laughs) you know? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And I just, yeah, I want to like get it under control because I feel like it's everywhere, you know, the rash, Some, yeah, the fucking thing. It's like all autoimmune stuff. Sometimes Ugh. I feel like, <laughs> tell me if you ever feel like this. I'm like, clearly I have inflammation. Like it's obvious. Like sometimes I'll eat or drink something and I have to immediately like clear my throat because mm-hmm. it's like has caused a reaction in my body where I'm like secreting things or whatever. And I'm like, you know what that is? That's like your body is like producing slime basically to like protect your soft tissues or whatever. But whenever I start to read all of the things that cause inflammation, both like physical things and emotional. Sometimes I feel like I must be made of inflammation. And if I was ever successful at getting rid of all of the inflammation that I might just like disappear poof. or I'd be like, you would I'd poof. just be like an empty balloon. Yeah. Y- you poof. know, <laughs> I kind of feel that way too. I you know what like I used I'm... to say? I used to say that like, if I think that if like, 85% of humans lived inside my body, they would, for one day, they'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong? This girl, what are you doing? You're in constant fucking distress and pain. 
There have um, been times when I have almost gotten like a panicky feeling and I'm like, what is it? And it'll be like for the first time in a month, I feel kind of like fine. <laughs> like no stomach ache, no stiff neck, no eye flames, tear duct flames, <laughs> no like blocked ear, no blocked sinus, no coughing, no sneezing, no. And then I'm like, oh, what's wrong with me is I feel good, LOL. <laughs> A true lull. Um, wait, you know what else Mark and I did yesterday, but I had to cut it halfway through. I was like, we got to, I got to go. I can't do this anymore because I, my head hurt and I was just like, there was just too much going on. Yeah. And it felt really overwhelming. We went, so we're doing this sale at yes. Pure Thrift. Yes. Um, and I was like, wow, well, we're just going to clean out. We're going to do, we're just going to get rid of so much of this stuff. Yeah. Casey, I don't think I can explain to you how much stuff it is. Oh, no. It is. Like, it's fucking crazy. Like, we were going through things. Like, a, like not a joke. Mark and I were, I was like, did we run several restaurants? <laughs> the amount of glassware alone. Right. That we had in our old house. Like, I'm not kidding you. We literally could have had a catering company. If you would show if you showed me the amount of glassware. Yeah. That we have, keep in mind now, we still we have two places now, right? Yeah. And we have ample glassware in both. Right. Okay. So this is the stuff that's just like been in storage. Right. You've been living without it. Because we've been living without it. Because we don't need it. Right. It is. Hundreds of glasses. Wow. And I'm just like, what What for? What did we need them for? <laughs> what did we do with them? I don't even remember. Was there a time? Why did we have them? Where did they come from? What? Oh where, I, where did they live? Was our house that big? I guess the answer is yes. Our house was really big. But your, hu- your house was quite big and also like it was quite full. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, it wasn't like, um, like some people have a very minimalist place where they live and you like look at their house and you're like, where would I even get a drinking glass to get a drink? You know what I mean? Like they live like that, but you had like a very homey and very full and big house. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you know, and you know. I love stuff. I am a maximalist. Yes. When it comes to stuff, I believe in stuff. Yeah. But I did have a moment yesterday where I was like, this is just too much stuff. This is too much stuff. Yeah. I can't, I can't do this. It's too much stuff. Yeah. And then I, I also was like, but where's the stuff that I want? Because you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, right. and, then, and then I'm like, but wait, where is that, that stuff? Where's the stuff that I'm looking for? And I don't fucking know. Anyway, halfway through, I was like, I got to call it. I can't, I can't even, I, I can't. Did you but make good was, progress? Uh, we did. We made okay, really good, good progress, but okay. it, it is this, I just want guys, I just want you to know if you're planning on coming to New York that weekend, the 10th and 11th of February. going to be a big sale. It's going to be a big sale. It's going to be a big sale. Should and I come? I think you should. I actually think you should. <laughs> I think you should. I don't need anything, but I can No, no, help. no. You could just come hang out. <laughs> I also was thinking maybe we could do like a raffle yeah. for a pig pot. Yes. That'd be so fun. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I was just like the amount, the sheer amount of things that I have, that I have, it's crazy. Wow. Also, there was like one box that like, because you guys, you remember we sold our house in, at the height of the pandemic in 2020. Right. No vaccines yet. Week I was filming Girls Five Eva. Air travel was not really a vibe. I could not. We could not go back and pack our house up ourselves. Right. right. So we had two people do it. Like our declutter fly people 
yeah. organizers and Raymond Padilla, right. who was my assistant at the time. Shout out Ryan, Raymond. Uh, but like there, like I, I think also the, the people packing us, the movers or whatever that were packing us, I think some of the stuff they assumed was going to come to New York and like be opened. Right. Not f- like four years later. Right. So literally one box I opened and it was like vitamins. Oh gosh. And supplements. <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah. And like, uh, like, yeah, like a bunch of like protein powders and stuff. I was just like, oh, what? Yeah. Just like all trash, right? Like I, yeah. oh, oh, I'm so glad I've been paying that I paid to ship and store this box. Right. For the last three years. Yeah. Anyway, um, so many ki- so much kitchen, kitchen, so many kitchen items. Yeah. That are just going to be gone. And then like also hilarious is I don't exactly know why this happened, but like most of Mark's clothes were in storage. Like we just oh. found all of his clothes yesterday. And I was like, how did we not know that you don't have any of your suits or shoes or anything? He's like, I've been wearing the same like four things for the last four <laughs> years busy. And I was like, what? Was he, did he literally, just I'm like, take what? enough clothes when he thought that you were going for like three weeks and then he never remembered that he had like a whole other life? Like, I think that's about it. Yeah. Like basically, yes. I think wow. that he was like, you know, I I like, I, I actually, I don't even know. Like, I think he, there just wasn't a lot of room wherever we were staying. Right, right. And I think he was like, oh, if I need my suits or if I need th- something, I'll just like cross that bridge. Yeah. Like, what never, am I, what is, never I think he the was, bridge. We never crossed the bridge, but I also think he was a little bit like, what do I need? Right. Like, it's a pandemic, and I'm just like the house dad now. Right. And, like, he wears jeans and... Yeah, like, (laughs) you know, he bought blunt... Like, we bought blunt... I know that he's, like, bought boots since we've lived here. We got our... We did have our coats shipped. So, like, he had his coat... Oh but then God. we like looked and I'm like, oh my God, Mark, look at all of these like jackets and all this, like all these shirts and like all this stuff. He's like, oh my God, that's where it is. It was kind of hilarious. Oh my God. I was like, God. your shoes. But then he was like, truly, he's like, I mean, do I need any of this? Maybe we'll just sell all this too. And I was like, clearly uh, you don't. I mean, like it's been obviously. four years. You know? I know, but some of this stuff I was like, oh, it's your like, he had like nice dress shoes and yeah. like. Stuff you was, don't need it. You might want it and want to make room for in your life for it, but it's not. It's nothing important enough to make you go to the storage base and find it. Yeah, until well, now. I guess not. Yeah, we also like have. Here's what I was gonna say. Like the storage space that's like, it's literally like two hours outside of the city. Yeah. Um, because it's like a long term deep storage place. It's right. like we're not accessing that stuff. Like, right. it's not like when you have a storage unit and you're like, oh, go pop by the storage unit and see if you can find whatever. That's not right. what it's like. So this stuff was like held in deep storage. And we went there one time before the move into the townhouse uh-huh. and we got a lot of stuff then. But I do feel like perhaps we didn't see all of the stuff. Wow. Well, know, it's, it's, so it's going to be an epic sale, I guess. Well, I hope it really uh, is. Well, anyway, I'm very excited about this thing. The sale. About the sale. Yeah, that's going to be a big deal. I know. That's great. I mean, I can identify with a lot of what you're saying because like we still have our house in Connecticut and it's being rented out to tenants. But like when I came to LA, I hardly brought anything. 
And then when we bought the house to move into right before the pandemic, Matt and Eli packed up what was important back in Connecticut, but also left a lot of stuff. So the house was like furnished in Connecticut, but also like just a lot of our stuff is stored there. So it's clearly stuff that we lived without for four years that like, I don't know that I could claim that it's particularly precious to me. Um, It just is stuff that would have been too cumbersome to move across the country. Uh, But that was like valuable. Like we didn't want to (sighs) just throw it out or give it away or whatever. But anyway, there's a lot of stuff in storage still at that house in Connecticut. Well, if you want to add any to the Galentine's Day sale, I think you're (laughs) you're more than welcome. We could do, we could do, if you have another wrap, we could, we could do a raffle for a pig and a raffle for a wrap. Yes. We could put together a raffle for the um like for some advertisers from our podcast, like like that kind of thing too. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's and do it. uh you know, and I'm sorry guys, I know it's just an in person sale is just so much easier. I can't yeah, I can't deal with the shipping and the and the and posting on the internet. I don't know. I mean, maybe I could figure it out. I would have to like hire some this is just easier. This is just yeah. easier. Yeah. This is just like... And it's more it's fun, honestly. I know. And I'm it excited. happens and it's done. I and... think Michelle's going to give me some stuff too. Oh, exciting. And I think Jen Tulloch may be giving some items. I think because I'm asking like all my girlfriends if there's anything they want to sell. Oh, nice. Okay. Excellent. That sounds so fun. Because Galentine's. Get it? Galentine's. I do get it. I'm going to see if Christine can come out. Aw, she just so got fun. back from the UK, though. So I saw her. I saw her travels. Her she UK had the best travels. Time. I know. Um, yeah, that looked like a fun trip. I know. I think it really was. I did. Um, I feel so bad for your sinuses. <laughs> it looks like they're really hurting you. They really are hurting me, and it's not cool. Oh man! And uh, you know, it's okay. I'll be fine. I guess. <laughs> I'm just trying I to like I had already oh. texted you, but I also went to like it's like LA is just wall to wall awards right now. So like I have many friends that are going to uh awards ceremonies and things like that. I am not, but it was fun that I did get to see our friend Juan. We went to lunch with him yesterday. He's oh, that's an fine. Entertainment reporter in Puerto Rico, but he was here to cover the award shows. And so we got lunch yesterday, but I also went to a friend came to town from New York because her show was nominated for some Emmys, I guess. And uh, she threw a party at the Chateau Marmont and that place, I was texting you there, but that place was crawling with celebrities. And then it was like one of those weird situations where I don't want to like name names of like who was there uh, because whatever, that's their private business and they probably went there to get a drink. But it was one of those weird situations where a bunch of people had asked me if I was going to this event. It was an art gallery opening that was like in some way related to Prince. It was a photographer that had worked with Prince. And I was like, oh, I'm not going. I don't know that guy personally because, oh, because I went to this Prince event last week. And Mm -hmm. so I was seeing everyone there and they were like, are you going to this photographer's exhibition? And I was like, I don't know that guy IRL. So I wouldn't be going to the party, but Mm -hmm. it sounds super fun. But then after, of course, out of curiosity, I was looking at the photos of his opening night party to look for my friends that I had just seen at this like Prince event. And in the photos, I saw all the people that I had just seen at the Chateau Marmont. So clearly everyone that, not everyone that I saw, but a good handful of people that I saw at Chateau Marmont were clearly getting a drink there and then on their way to this other event. So they all had the same outfits on and I felt like a real internet (laughs) sleuth. But wait, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Was the was the photography show close to the chateau? I think so, yeah. It must have been. Well, there you go. Yeah. Just like a, a hop skip. But it was the first time that I ever I've been to the Chateau Mormont a bunch of times, which I always think of as like one of the places where you would go for celebrity spotting. And I truly have never seen a celebrity there. Uh, it but is, this this time I saw it, a bunch. Yeah, but it 
it is legit like before or during or after awards shows i always think it's like that is exactly like where everybody goes yeah seems like it although i haven't i mean listen i haven't been oh no wait we did i when i went to that award show with michelle you when i went to the critics choice yeah we went to the chateau after remember oh, see there you go there you yeah it was go. fun yeah remember it was like terrible and then it was fun <laughs> i do remember yeah, yeah, i do yeah, yeah. remember yeah me too me too Ye old Critics' Choice Award. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash busy and get on your way to being your best self. Guys, New Year's, new you, maybe. <laughs> maybe you're like, I had too much stress last year. Yeah. Maybe you are thinking that it's time to get into some therapy because therapy just helps you identify your strengths. Right. And helps you like make changes that really you're able to stick to. Positive coping skills. Also like how to set boundaries. Yeah. Um, Things that make your, your life work better for you. So that all the other stuff is like feels easy too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the actual like organizing the closet or whatever. And therapy isn't just for someone who has major trauma. Like it's literally for everyone. It's skills that can help you move through the world um, in a more open and easier way with more ease, you know? Yeah. Uh, If you're thinking of starting therapy, highly recommend giving better help a try because it is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. You fill out a questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Um, Which is so great. It's so great. And it's a great way to see the kind of impact that therapy can have on your life and your everyday stressors, you know? Yeah. Because maybe you're like, I don't really, I'm okay. Like, I'm good. But you know what? We always say, you could be better. Right. You could probably now, be better. Th- good is the time, you know? Yeah, good is when, the best time. It's the best time just to figure out what's the best way of taking care of the inside of you. Exactly. Exactly. Look, celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash busy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash busy. Hungry root, hungry root, hungry root. (laughs) I love hungry root so much. (laughs) I was just looking because you know what? Hungry root offers like anti-inflammation food in their boxes as well. Like I can pick that. Yes. So... I'm actually gonna order a new box. Uh, right. Hungry now. Root. Yeah. One of my goals for 2024 is just mm-hmm. to not be scrambling for dinner every every night. I just feel like if I knew what I was having or making for dinner every night, my life would be a lot easier. If I could take the mental space that I devote to trying to think of what I want to eat every night and give it to something else, I'll be in a lot better shape. So Hungry Root is helping me get that together. You're like, I can finish the screenplay. (laughs) Because I know I have something delicious waiting for me in the refrigerator that's going to be super easy to cook or convince someone to cook for me, which is a delight if I can get that to happen. But well, either way. I also think I also think I'm going to make a priority to help Cricket like expand her little palette because like it's time like I've yeah. let this I've let this slide long enough with the just like mac and cheese and chicken nuggets like right like I got to get this kid into some more interesting meals you know what I mean and I yeah. do think it's proven that like when you have kids that help you cook they're more likely to try the food that they're cooking um, and. And also, like I talked about on the episode, I am looking to do a little bit more anti-inflammation 
And uh, I love that Hungry Root has all kinds of different, like, uh, like they support like all different kinds of diets and lifestyles. Yes. So they have that as an option of like yeah. the groceries I, that they will bring me. Exactly. Um, will be what are considered like, you know, the anti-inflammation diet. Foods, right. And I keep carbs on the amazing. low side and yeah. it's very easy to do that with them. And by the way, if I decide that there's a carb that looks irresistible to me and I want to add it in, I can always add it in. And I've discovered so many tasty recipes from them, but also stuff that's like semi homemade that I just have to like heat up or whatever. Very easy, really, really healthy. And it makes me so happy to have it in my fridge. I'm actually excited to order right now after we stop doing this podcast because I'm because <laughs> now I'm excited about it. I just am. So Hungry Root is the easiest way for you to get fresh, high quality food delivered to your door, healthy groceries, simple recipes, all in one place. Spend less time meal planning, shopping and cooking. More time just enjoying your planner <laughs> <laughs> and eating the healthy food that you're going to love with Hungry Root. Right now, Hungry Root is offering you, Busy Phillips is doing her best listeners, 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Come on. It's incredible. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash busy to get 40% off your first delivery and your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash busy. Don't forget to use our link so that they know that we sent you. I'm like, yeah, I'm like really uh, excited about work stuff. And I'm excited about Girls 5 Eva season two, which is like, no, no season three. Season three, guys. <laughs> the third season, not the second. Well, I'm excited for everybody to see the other seasons too on Netflix. One and two and three all at the same time. One, two, three. Yeah, that's going to be great. On Netflix, March 12th, 14th. What did I say? I think it's 12th. Let me look. Let me Google it. <laughs> but before then, we are going to have this sale. What else is happening? I don't know. <laughs> Anything else? We, Hopefully nothing. we'll have other things. To talk Hopefully about, Casey. we'll have other things to talk about. I'm like, my eyes are rolling because <laughs> I'm like just ready to work on. I just want to like do the thing. I don't know, whatever, 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 guys. You'll whatever. We'll let you know when we can. Hopefully, maybe next week. Um, yeah, I feel that way too. I'm really ready to do some work. I feel like everybody must be feeling that way. I feel like everybody must be feeling that way. Very, very proud of all of my friends that won Emmys and Critics' Choice Awards, although... Didn't March watch. 14th. March 14th. Okay. Yes. March 14th, to be clear. Didn't watch the Emmys, didn't watch the Critics' Choice, but I did watch Chelsea Handler's um, monologue. Monologue. Me too, me too. She did a great job. Yep. Um, watched a lot of the clips of the Emmys, but I felt happy not watching it while also just cheering on the my friends that were there and who won. Um, it was great, but I felt very happy not watching it. I've not watched a fucking, I told you, awards yeah. show or I have no idea that they're even happening. Yeah. The I'm only like, thing I cared about was Coleman Domingo's outfit. Well... We, ch that we was, chatted about that. We chatted about it. I'm still thinking about it. It's my favorite red carpet look of all time, what Coleman Domingo wore to the Critics' Choice Awards. Um, it was Valentino. <laughs> Again, people were DMing me like, who's the designer? And I was like, "I guys, I don't know. I'm using the internet the same as you're using the internet. I, I don't know. <sighs> People I, really you know got to ask I should, some questions I, that they could Google themselves, I got to tell you. I need to reframe it. And whenever someone asks me a question, I need to be grateful that they think I'm as smart and that they mm. think I would know the answer and just, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. be human and say, like, I don't know the answer instead of being like, what? What? I don't. How would I know? I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's well, it's the same as like in your house. Like when someone's asking you to find something <laughs> in your house and you're like, how how would I know any better where that is than you would? Yeah. Here's an idea. Look. <laughs> <laughs> That is something that we have recently, like my guys are great. They are, I think the highest evolution of like straight white guys that are on the market today. Totally. You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah. No, they're great. But that being said, like we are having, and it's because I think for adults living in a not huge house together, we were we are having some trouble with systems breaking down like refrigerator organization and pantry organization and garage organization and closet organization and what i realized finally after repeating like the same cycle of like i get furious i rip everything apart i implement a new logical organizational system that I then tell everyone about that they only half listen to and like I fucking label everything. And I'm like, if there's not a label for this, nothing else, it doesn't go here. So it goes somewhere else. So don't put it here, whatever. Like that's just a cycle that I'm sure you have been through, I've been through, and I'm sure a lot of people listening have been through in their houses. And what I realized this time, and he was really kind about it, but I talked to Matt about it, and I was like, listen, I know you work hard all the time, and this is like probably the last thing you want to spend your time doing, but I believe that if you don't participate in the reorganization of the fridge, you won't uphold the system. Because you, it'll, it will be impossible for you to respect it fully mm. unless you had a hand in determining how it goes. So what I'm saying is, instead of me organizi- organizing, instead it's of organizing. me organizing mm-hmm, the fridge mm-hmm. for the thousandth time, mm-hmm. in since we've lived in this house, I need you to organize the fridge and you tell me how it goes, and then I will, I will promise to respect and uphold the system. And it was so, again, he was really kind about it. And it's hard because you gotta you gotta walk a tightrope where you're not being condescending and not sounding too exasperated while also being a little condescending and very exasperated. But it was kind of funny because he, to his credit, he pulled out the whole fridge, organized the whole fridge, and then he walked everyone through the system. And it was funny to me, like, Because he was, like, being so official and being like, and here's where the mustards go. And if it's not, you know, nothing. it was nothing revolutionary. It's not even that different from how I organized it last time. But now I feel like I have an ally in keeping it like that, I hope. We'll see. We'll see. It is the, and I, this is in part because we live, all of us, maybe, maybe all of us have ADD. (laughs) <laughs> at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't... I'm just saying, like, I don't know who doesn't is my only point. Right. We've and like, we encircled ourselves with people who are like us. We are. Yes. And <sighs> the truth is... Oh, I posted this because I talked to Jennifer Carpenter, Um who's a friend of mine from like white chicks and yes. I hadn't talked to her in a really long time. And, uh, we ended up like getting to like talking last week because I ran into Amanda Seyfried, whatever. <laughs> Guys, it's, <sighs> Just you ran into your old girlfriends. And so then she, so then Jen and I ended up talking. Um, and she called me and we were FaceTiming and she's like, what are you doing right now? And I was like, I'm, she's like, are you organizing? <laughs> And I was like, yes. She's like, my God, woman. I have known you busy for over 20 years. And you are always cleaning out and organizing (laughs) beauty products, clothing, shoes, your pantry. And I was like, yeah, that is literally my life. My entire life is just organizing and cleaning shit out. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. That's it. And I will say that as someone who's observed your life and observed the lives of people similar 
to who have like similar lives to you. Mm-hmm. Like you're a maximalist on your own, but also just a lot of things come into your life for various Too many things. Like so many things. People send you things and people <sighs> bring you things and people sometimes like you're using something for like a photo shoot or for something or other. And like your house is suddenly like the storage and staging area for that until it gets picked up again. And, you know, and what I think is tough for you is like when someone sends you a product, like I think that a lot of people, like a lot of people that I've even worked with are like, don't even open it, put it straight on the giveaway pile. Like, I don't even want to see it. I don't want to touch it. I have no interest in it. I think when people send you things, like you know that they've worked hard on those things and you're genuinely interested in it. You're interested to see if it's any good and like, do you like it? And is it as life-changing as the person is claiming it is? So like, I always think you want to give it some consideration, but you have a lot of things that like really come into your life uninvited and like take up space and I think that you're very respectful of everything but the like the hard side is that you can get like overwhelmed by face lotions you know I'm so overwhelmed by face lotion (laughs) (laughs) and it's hard you know because you want to try it you want to get to it you want to or you want to pass it along to someone who can really use it it's very difficult we've had this conversation before but I have friends who are like their lives are the same and sometimes when they try to give me something even if I have no interest in it I sometimes will take it because I think it'll just be easier for me to like get rid of it than it is for them. Like, I feel, I feel like there's a desperate thing where they're like, will you please just take this chair or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Yes. And then they never ask again, like where it went or whatever. So I'll like pass it along to someone or donate it or whatever. I just think it's like easier for me in that moment to like take it off their hands because they're clearly overwhelmed. And that's, that's, you know, those are pretty good problems to have that you're overwhelmed with abundance is like such a privilege, but it also is still overwhelming. But it's still overwhelming. Yeah. I just am like, <laughs> I don't know. It, ta- it would like take years, it feels like. Yeah. Don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It feels like it would take years to get it all together. And also, and then no one respects my organizational system. This is what I'm saying. This is what, that is a huge problem. And I think that's probably a huge problem with, well, I'm going to say majority of women in households, but I'm sure there are also a great many men who are feeling like they take the lead on this and do all of the like, um, all of the emotional labor of implementing these two, and and also like logical labor, you know, like because it takes a lot of planning and and strategizing, and you see what works the best, and and when it, it's not to knock anyone in anyone's family either. Like if you just think like, oh, mom takes care of that or whatever, and like it's not on me or. But if you didn't keep doing it to keep it at the place that's not even like fully organized, but if you didn't work to maintain almost 24-7 the system, it would get so quickly out of hand. It would take like two days before everyone would be like waving a white flag from underneath bottles of you know, whatever, cleaning products and (laughs) shoes and clothes that need to be laundered or whatever, you know. And so, like, I, in a discussion with my family, I was saying, like, they were saying, well, we kind of let you take the lead because it seems, like, more important to you. And I'm like, I'm just the front line. Like, it's important to me, I think, because I see, like, the danger coming if I don't... But, like... 
I would like you to consider, do you think it's my dream to police the kitchen countertops and make sure that the tops of the washing machines are free from wadded up tissues, screws, and change? No. Do you think it's my dream to be doing that eight hours a day? It's nobody's dream, really. If it is someone's dream, I hope they do it professionally and they get paid handsomely for it. But I do not. And it is not. I mean, also, like, it might be my dream if I if that's all I ever had to do. Right. But you have to do the same things everybody else is doing. Plus, oh, man. pick up all the wadded up tissues, the socks, Ugh. the tools that some... It, here's what happens in my house. Oh, my God. A lot... Oh, I wish... Here's where I wish a therapist was on this call with us. What happens in my house a lot is like things get pulled out to do something that does benefit the family. So say like a drill or like a mop yes, or whatever. Yes, yes, but yes. then it, the job gets done and the thing gets set down yep. and then it it's like becomes invisible. And so then it becomes my job to like, I feel like it becomes my job to be like, hey, you have to put that mop away. And like, by the way, I'm guilty of all the same stuff too. I'm guilty of leaving all this stuff out too. So I'm not saying that this is something I never do. What I'm saying is like, I have to police myself, but also the other people in my family, you know? So it's, I feel like this is something that a lot of people are talking about right now. So I, I, I can feel people listening to this being like, yes, yes, that's... Well, yeah, because also it's like, we're at the start of this new year. Yeah. We're all trying to, we're like, this is the time. Yeah. And it is. And it's also never not the time. (laughs) (laughs) My fucking house. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe there will just be a time when like, it just becomes more automatic. I wish it was more automatic for me because I feel like there are people I know that are just very organized and very neat and aren't always hunting for like a stray shoe or whatever. I feel like there are people that are like that, but then I just wonder, like, are they spending so much time of their lives, like keeping everything together? And would they rather have someone else like helping out a little bit? I don't know. Or is it, or is it like for some people, their executive functioning is good that they don't even have to think about it? Yes, that could be the case too. One thing I will say is that like in our family, like everybody's really helpful and everybody is also like kind of disorganized. I will say that like as the person that I'm like, it's not my dream to organize the fridge. And so you have to take some responsibility for it as well because we all share and use the fridge. I will say that when you do that and you tell someone else that they have to take responsibility, you have to stand by whatever form their organization, you know what I mean? Like you can't then be like, I don't like where you... I don't like where you put the olives. You know what I mean? Right. Like you have to, you have to let them run with, with the ball. (laughs) (laughs) The olive ball. (laughs) You have to, and you have to just be like, yeah, I told you to take some responsibility and take some pride in this fucking fridge. And you did. (sighs) And so like now the olives are somewhere insane, but I just have to go with it. I have to, you know. (laughs) It, it made some type of sense to you. So, and I feel like I can do that, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard not to join in and be like, are you sure? Are you sure about that? I mean, that is the biggest. Yeah, that is the biggest issue, I think. Yeah. Is like actually allowing other people yeah. to do the thing. Yeah. Well, it's that's like managing anything, right? Like, that's why it's hard to be a manager. That's why it's hard to, you know, well, this has come up in the past with 
even, you know, just people that are like working on your team, even when you're not working in like a traditional workplace setting, like even if you're freelance or whatever, um, people that are working on your team that you're not managing, which that mm-hmm. adds like a whole other layer. And then at home in your family, like you're not the manager of your family. It, you're not being paid to be the manager. There's no like explicit agreement that like you're the manager, but like somehow you're the one managing everything. So if you want to shift some of the management onto another person, then you have to like, you know, you have to abide by it, which is, that's a tough thing. But I think it's something that everyone goes through. And the truth is we probably just have too much stuff and too much to do, but I'm excited for you because it sounds like, well, it sounds like you're halfway going through, you're halfway done going, even though you got overwhelmed, you're halfway done going through your storage area. Yeah. The storage unit. Yeah. Yeah. Then I guess we got to go back. (laughs) I really don't want to. But, yeah. Do you feel, you said there's stuff that you didn't lay eyes on that you were hoping to see there? Kind of. I don't know. I just like, yeah, I don't actually know, Casey. Like, I, it's just, there's never going to be enough room here. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I don't know what I'm doing. Like, like, there are things, yes, that I like definitely would want if I move back to Los Angeles. Okay, like all of my baking stuff and cake decorating things, like I want all that stuff, but I'm like, I can't put it any, there's nowhere to put it here. So what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Wait, can I ask you a question? Do you, are you sentimental about the actual items themselves? Like because they were used for a particular occasion or is it just that? Which ones? Like your cake decorating stuff. Oh, like, no, I'm not sentimental about most of that stuff. I mean, there are some cake pans that I like that you can't like get anymore. Right, so I want right. those. Yeah. But um, no, I'm not sentimental about cake decorating stuff necessarily. It's just like, it's just a bunch of shit that I have. You know what I mean? Okay. So as an armchair organizing expert who is disorganized, I would say anything that's not irreplaceable get rid of it because there's going to be new, better stuff in the event that you move back to Los Angeles, more modern cake pans, more modern decorating things that you're going to want to try. It will cost the same as you would have spent storing all that stuff indefinitely. And to ship it. No, I know. And to ship I know. It. So I know. Let it go. If it's not like a limited edition, <laughs> never going to be made again, uh, figural snuffle up a guest pan or whatever. Well, by the way, I was actually just thinking about my big bird cake pan. Yes. Exactly. So that so. one you keep, but anything square or round, get the fuck out. Okay. And then you're already probably down by 75% of your cake de- decorating that was, supplies. Honestly, that was like what I was kind of moving. I was moving from that space. Yeah. yeah. The sale's going to be huge. really huge it's gonna be huge it's gonna be huge that's exciting yeah but overwhelming but think of how much psychic energy you're gonna feel once you know I know it's hard for you because I know you have like regretted letting some stuff go in the past mostly just clothes yeah yeah, that's Just hard. Close. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got to be honest with you guys. Uh, I've been doing more like free advertising for Thrive Cosmetics in the last two weeks. <laughs> I like, saw it come I, up in a magazine article. It's <laughs> literally, uh, it's everywhere. So if you are on the fence, just Google. <gasps> Any of the press that I did for Mean Girls because yeah. I mentioned Thrive Cosmetics tubing mascara in every single... They call it on the, in like our little sheet. They're like, it's the viral tubing mascara. I mean, did I make it go viral? Maybe. <laughs> because I am so obsessed with it. I just talked about it on Jonathan Van Ness's podcast this week. Like there you I go. literally, I cannot get enough of my Thrive Cosmetics 
liquid lash liquid extensions. lash extensions mascara guys yeah. i've always got it on me it's right here here it is yeah. i have it on my eyes right now i love it i Love it. I also love that brilliant eye brightener too. It's like a highlighter stick. Yes. You can use it on your eyes. You can use it on your your high cheekbone. You can use it on your little lip dip. Wherever thing. your collarbone, wherever you need. Whatever. Whatever you need. I use it but everywhere. That, listen, guys, but that liquid lash extensions mascara, I want you to tag me. Okay. I want you to get it. <laughs> And I want you to tag me for real. Post yeah. a story and tag me because I want to see how right I am. That it like makes everyone's lashes look incredible. Now, you know, I curl, you know, I'm a curler. Of course. So I curl my lashes first and then I use that mascara. And my God, you guys, the difference it makes. Jonathan Van Ness, when I did his podcast this week, literally was like, I'm so sorry, I have to stop you. What is going on with your face? You're, did you do your own glam? And I'm like, I did my own glam. Because I've got my liquid lash extensions mascara and then I don't need anything else. It's all you need. And by the way, people have asked, it's so easy to come off. It just comes off with warm soap and water. So none of the You don't like, even need soap. I took a bath last night and I just used the warm water and like it was just... It was. It just came right off. It was That's fine. it. It comes right off. There's no like running or staining. Like I always get. I I have like very oily skin, so mascara always transfers under my eye within like an hour. None of that. None of that with the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. And I also want to... We're talking about the cosmetics, but I'm also a huge fan of their brightening face wash. Like, the scent is so heavenly to me. And so, like, it, it's just... It's perfect. I have my makeup and I have my skincare from Thrive and it's all I could ever want. Well, I mean, do take our word for it. Because we're <laughs> our word is good and we are obsessed. So uh, we want you to try, especially I want you to try the mascara and tag me in it. Okay. Also, we love that Thrive Cosmetics gives back. It's important to me. It's important to you. Yeah. It's important to all of us. We got to like find ways to do that. You know what I mean? To give back. Yeah. Um, I just really appreciate a company that does good, especially when it's something that I was going to buy anyway, based yes. on the quality of it. The fact that it then takes some of my money and does good things with it uh, is just a cherry on the Sunday. We're here for you, Thrive Cosmetics. We love you. And, uh, and I will never stop doing free advertising for you. <laughs> But I love that we get to do um, paid advertising for you on this podcast because you support us and we support you. Um, for real. But we want you guys to get in on it. Right now, yeah. you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash best. That's Thrive Cosmetics. And it's C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash best for 20% off your first order. Go get it. Oh, AG1. You know why I love AG1? Why? Because I like got this cold yesterday and then I took my AG1 and I like weirdly felt better like four minutes later. <laughs> I didn't feel like eating a lot yesterday, but I knew that my AG1 was like gonna sustain me. It's like nutritional insurance. It's got all the things that you need. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last four years, we've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. Just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day. And you just heard Busy say it made her feel like energized within minutes energized literally <laughs> energized <laughs> that's because it's also each... like all that all the supplements and the mi mineral the mixing the pills and the, the things and the pill cases and i'm like i can't keep it all i can't keep track it's exhausting yeah and i know that just one scoop of ag1 covers the nutrient gaps supports my mental and physical health it's like literally the easiest thing I do all day. It is the easiest thing I do all day. Yeah. Is the truth. Yeah. Each serving of AG1 delivers our daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, we love them. You should try it. 
If you haven't tried it by now, I'm urging you, please. It is like just an easy little ritual morning habit that you can do. Yeah. That you drink and you're like, good, I'm good. And I know I've done this like one, I've done at least one good thing for my health today. Even if I don't make it to the workout, even if I don't make it, you know what I mean? Like I yes. did this. Yeah. This is going to be, this will this will get me through. Um, Guys, we're just very lucky that AG1 has sponsored our podcast for so long because we love them and they love us and they love you and we love you and we want all parties to come together. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. But I do want you to try AG1. If you have not yet tried it, I'm just saying it's it's like a, it's one product that I would recommend ed- every time to elevate your health. AG1. It's why we've partnered with them for the last four years. So listen, if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs, which come in handy, believe me, with your first purchase exclusively at our link, drinkag1.com slash busy. That's drinkag1.com slash busy. Check it out. And I can't, like, what the fuck with my sinuses? What am I going to do here? I'm so annoyed. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I wish there was, like, a magic something. I'm sure there is something that would make it better. I love that, like, occasionally people are, like, reach out to us. I talked about it on Instagram this morning, like, that I yeah. have this. And someone DM'd me that I, like, vaguely know but don't know that well. And they were like... You really need to do sinus rinsing. It's da da da. And I was like, oh, God. Okay. I'm famous for sinus, public sinus rinsing. Thank you Honey, very much. I've been rinsing these sinuses since before <laughs> you were born. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little, I don't know how well it works, but I have seen this advertised to me. There is like a little electronic device. I have it. Do, and it doesn't do anything uh, for so. you. No. I actually think that the like sort of manual. One is kind yeah. of better. Okay. All right. I mean, but I do have that one. Navage, it's called. The Navage. Oh, okay. All right. It's like an electronic. I don't even pot. know what it does. Thing. Yeah. I don't It just don't even... shoots the water through one side and sucks it out the other. Oh, no. The thing I'm talking about is something that you touch actually like to your face or your head and it like puts like an electronic pulse through, I think, your sinuses. Wait, what? Well, now I want that. But I also might have that because I <laughs> you do might have, have things that have like, you know what I mean? It's probably under all your face lotions. <sighs> <laughs> but I don't Wait, know how what well is it works. It? I've how never... I... Well, then I'm looking online right now. It's like some little face zapper. I mean, I love a face zapper. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> oh, Let's my go ahead gosh. and zap my face. Yeah. I'm looking. I don't see it. I'll try to find Please. it and send it to you so that you can Please. evaluate what, it. What do you, what, like a... Oh, it's called the the Clear Up. Yep, 2. the Tivic 0. Clear Up for sinus relief. Yeah. Well, it is not cheap. It's not cheap, which automatically makes me feel like, is there it's something good? to it? <laughs> is it good? What are you? Will people pay this amount of money? What is it? It's this? a transcutaneous electrical oh. nerve stimulator that electrically stimulates the skin overlying the paranasal sinuses and it is intended to be used for the temporary relief of moderate to severe congestion. Sir? Only for use by people 18 and older. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just reading off the off the internet what it says. I can't vouch for this. I haven't read any reviews of it. I've never heard any uh, testimonials by anyone who's ever used it. It's just something I saw and I was like, I wonder if that would work for busy. But what is the electrical stimulant? Because I have so many like face zapper type things. You know what right. I mean? Right. Right. 
Well, I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. I would have to look into it. I will always say that, and you guys know this about me, I'm always willing to um, try. (laughs) I believe in electricity. I believe in like light therapy, all of those things. I think they can be really helpful for a lot of things. So I'm always like, I might try this because I'll tell you, that I had like a really weird skin infection at one point that this is, it's gross. I had a really weird skin infection that nothing was helping with, like no prescription. And my dermatologist was kind of like, it's just like, you just have really sensitive and really like vulnerable skin. And like, this is going to be a thing that crops up with you over and over. And like, you just have to like take in it, take a, a prescription to like knock it down or whatever. And then I went to another dermatologist and they were like, oh, sometimes ultrasound will uh, will kill an infection if you want to try like a round of ultrasound. And she did ultrasound on my face and that's what finally fixed it. So I'm always like, if anyone has like a ha- handheld electrical device, I will put it right up to my skull and see if it works. Because <laughs> Well, listen. Sometimes I'm- it does. <laughs> I'm like very much on board with all of these things. Yeah. I don't know. It might work. I See, now this is what I should have gotten you for Christmas. I should have gotten you the Tivic Clear Up 2.0 instead of the ADHD Piper Song meditation chair, which a bunch of people want to try now. So Piper Song, you're welcome. Tivic yeah, Clear Up. Where's our free Where's our free one? Sinus Go relief ahead and device. Send it on over. You're you're welcome for the half a half an advertisement, um, but TBD uh, to see if you ever try it and how it works for you. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a Tivic. <laughs> <laughs> I kn- I just I'm know it's so get miserable. A anything Tivic. anything that happens from like the neck down, like any kind of pain or illness or whatever. Okay, I can manage it. But anything that happens to my head, I'm miserable. So I just feel for you that you have a sinus issue because it it just makes me miserable. It makes me feel claustrophobic. Yeah, I really hate it. Yeah. And I know that I'm I'm reading the reviews now. (laughs) People are loving it. All right, I'm buying it. You guys, I'm doing it right now. How fast can it get here? Overnight, please. <laughs> can they door dash it? <laughs> I don't want over... I don't want... No, I don't want... Um, maybe I have to buy it somewhere else. Because the shipping is like free shipping. I'm like, no, I want as fast... You want to pay for the shipping. I will pay... I'm going to pay... Yeah. See, free but this sh- is... Like, Guys, this is the thing, right? It's like, this is why it's like in and out. This is why I have so much shit. <laughs> Tivic clear up 2.0. Woo-hoo. Wait, delivery by... S- get it tomorrow, January 17th. Yes! <laughs> Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Oh my God. Fastest. I hope Order within works. 41 minutes. I got to do it. Order now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. I hope it works. Ah, me too. I can't sign in to my Amazon account. <laughs> classic. Classic. Classic me. I never know. I never know. I never know. Oh my god, I got it. Yes. It worked. You knew your password. Wait, I had, I'm not saying that this was Amazon, but it was a place where you order things from, as you're talking about, um, where it's way too easy to order something. But I ordered, (laughs) talking about like shipping woes or whatever, uh, I ordered three chairs for my backyard and they sent three 
pieces of one chair, but it wasn't even like one complete chair. (laughs) And then uh, they were like, you know, took the picture of the packages like on my front step and they were like, there's your packages. Hope you love them. And then I tried to like write a review saying like, by the way, you didn't deliver three chairs. You only delivered three pieces of one chair that didn't even add up to one single chair. They wouldn't allow my review to be published. And then also they kind of just were like, you have to send it back and start the whole process over again. <laughs> I was just like, can't can't you just send the rest of the pieces of... It was a lot. It was emotionally... I think, like, the upshot is, like, we're just never getting those chairs. I think I have to call it. Like, I went through a process of, like, finding the chairs, liking the chairs, deciding that those were the chairs that I wanted, and then, like, I loved the chairs, and I was excited to get them, and then we just got three pieces of one chair and not even one complete chair. And then they're like, you have to send those three pieces back, which are quite big. Uh, And they're not even like coming to our house to pick it up. We have to like bring it to UPS to send it back and then start the entire process. But I'm like, why would I, as a customer, start the entire process over again? Why? Knowing how it ended last time. No. Why would I take that risk? (laughs) It's Well, you're not going to. (laughs) I'm not. I'll sit on the ground outside. Thank you. But Wait, um, by the way, by the way, yeah, I, I actually can't get it tomorrow. I have to get it on Thursday. <sighs> oh, no, it's a really fucking bummer. But can I tell you the good news? Yeah, I just used points, baby, and it was free. Oh, that's so exciting! Yeah, I that was actually to... honestly that was very yeah. exciting. I have to laugh at myself whenever I'm like, oh my god, I can't get this by six o'clock. It's not coming till tomorrow at noon. Because I'm like, I loved um, the Little House on the Prairie books when I was a kid. And I just remember like, Pa would like saddle up all the horses to go into town and they'd be like, Pa, please bring back uh, a cup of brown sugar. And like, it would take days to get like a cup of brown sugar. And like, if if Pa even survived the trip into town <laughs> to get the things that he needed for the homestead. And here I am like, oh, I wanted that by 6 p.m. I mean, we all are kind of like little house on the prairie. <laughs> <laughs> Just ordering shades that we don't remember. I'm going to sell those fucking shades. <laughs> Someone's going to get those shades <laughs> at the sale. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm excited for you. I'm really happy for you. I think that like you're going to raise money for a good cause, which always makes you so happy. Do but love it. also you're going to like alleviate a lot of this like psychic weight that's just been like kind of like you're not even thinking about it all the time, but it's just like there running in the background. And you know, it's like when you figure out that like the New York Times has been using up your phone battery. You know, for like hours Wait, every day when when you it? haven't even looked at the New York Times in months. <laughs> Wait, is that what's using up my phone battery, Casey? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I've had it happen. I'm like, I guess I just like gave the New York Times permission just to be like living its best life on my phone at some point, And I wasn't even Constantly. looking at it. Constantly. Yeah. yeah. Just using up all my battery, all my space. <sighs> And I was like, I'm not even looking at you. What? What's happening? But that's what I think. Um, that's I think you're going to clear up a lot of battery life and a lot of storage, psychic storage space, which I think is good. I do too. Yeah. And I think you'll feel so good because the people that will want, will get these things, will really want them and use them. And it'll well, be cool. You for know, them. that's it's my like... Biggest. It's a cool proposition all around. From having that clothing swap, like I wondered if I would be a little anxious getting rid of some things, but I really like, I think I said this on the podcast before, I really like 
worked it out first where I did that thing where I turned all my hangers around backwards. And then whenever I used something, I turned the hanger around the right way. So when I went to pull everything out for my clothing swap, anything that had a backwards hanger, I knew I hadn't touched in a certain amount of time. And so I knew that was like a candidate to be on the chopping block. And then when I took those things out, I did consider like, you know, is this sentimental to me, even though I haven't touched it in three months or six months? Is this something that I would be sad to see go? And there were a couple of things that I kept, but for the most part, I was really, really ruthless. And I was a little nervous that I would be so sad seeing some things that I loved walking off with someone else. But the truth is, the part of the clothing swap, even though that day was super fun, and it was super fun, I felt it was like a fun fair. Um, yeah. We really had a great day, and there was, like, no, a lot of— Liz, Liz and I are, like— that's why I'm like, there's going to be raffles. Yeah. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. Like Liz and I are like, she's like, let's get a DJ. I'm like, wait, when we were at the storage unit yesterday, yeah, we found two cases of wine. Amazing. And I was like, we've got the wine. Yeah. You've <laughs> got it. the wine. Like That's there's going to be, it's going to be so, it'll be so fun. That's so great. The most fun part for me, besides like the day itself, was afterwards people posting, people that I didn't even know that just like came by to shop other people's clothes and my clothes, whatever, posting on Instagram being like, I'm at a gala and I'm wearing this dress and it looks so great on me and I'm so happy that I got it. And like, I met so many people that day because so many people that I knew brought a friend and that has been so fun for me, just seeing people being like, I've been waiting to wear this pair of jeans that I got at your clothing swap and today was the day. And so I think it'll, I think it will like be 10 times that for you. I know, I'm really excited. excited. I'm really excited. The other thing that I've been doing, which is like inspired by, but I'm not doing like whatever, I don't even know. Katie Azelton posted this like challenge of like 75 days of a different outfit every day and yes. like you have to but you you're not buying anything cuz i'm definitely on a for several reasons a, a buying moratorium for the, my dry january is just about um shopping and buying <laughs> things uh, and by the way and i guess the whatever the fuck that thing is called that i just purchased right now on the phone i'm only going to say that doesn't count because a this is a medical need <laughs> medical necessity. The, medical that necessity. device is FSA eligible. So I feel like it has some real medical, medically necessary device juice but behind it. B, also you guys just heard, I used points. I didn't even used, pay for it. So I didn't spend points. any money. So I didn't yes. spend any money. But anyway, my point is, my point is that um, without doing like the challenge where I'm taking a picture every day of my outfit, yeah. I have been, I've taken on, I was like, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to just like commit to really shopping in my closet, really wearing things, really putting together cute little looks and seeing how I feel, you know? Yeah. So I've been doing that. And because we know I have enough clothing. <sighs> it's true. Do you really you know. need all that? Cl- I'm just kidding. <laughs> I will cut a bit. I will cut. Uh. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. That makes me laugh so hard. But I mean... I think it's so good. I have been so appreciating Katie's posts and she looks so cute. Also have been loving Katie Storino's posts about things and she always recommends the best people to follow. Yeah, I just feel like I finally have reached a point where I kind of know what my style is and like, sure, it's fun to like add a little trendy thing here or there. But now I feel like I have pieces that I'm gonna, (laughs) I sound like I'm full of shit, but I feel like I have pieces that I'm gonna take as good care of and last as long as they can. And I finally know the value of like spending a few extra dollars to get a high quality item, either thrifted or whatever, instead of just buying whatever junk that's gonna fall apart after I wear it one time. So I'm just trying to be... You know, I'm trying to like have style, but also use my stuff. And this week I've been busting out like coats. I've been 
<laughs> making my son's been taking pictures of me in in these coats because I know your pictures freezing. have been really cute. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I just feel like you gotta like I go for so many months without even taking a picture of myself, and it's it's like. It's weird, right? Because I'm like, the world doesn't need a picture of me. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, like influencers, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They're so narcissistic. They always have to be putting it. I don't think that's it. I I just think I'm stuck in this weird place between like feeling weird about taking a picture of myself and like that thing that they always say, like the mom is never in the picture or whatever because of all these things that she like puts on herself. Like I don't look good enough right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares, whatever. And I'm like, I'm just putting this picture for myself. Like I put on this cute coat that's been in the back of my closet and it's finally cold enough. And like my, I was telling my friends, Ashley and Kristen, also your friends, um, that, it's fun to have Eli take pictures because, and he would be like such a great Instagram husband for someone someday if if anyone's looking. Um, he has no judgment about like whatever you want to do or for as long as you want to do it in front of the camera. Like he's just like, there's n- not a note of judgment detectable on his face. He's just happy to stand there and keep snapping pictures. So I took advantage of it to take some uh, nice coat pictures this week. I like that. I think that's great. <laughs> um, yeah. That's it, really. So is that what you're doing your best at, would you say? <sighs> yeah, I think that. And I think I've also been keeping up with my planner, which is like, um, we had a little planner. I, I know I was texting you about, we had like a little planner meetup where we all... Sh- did like a show and tell of our planners and what was good about it and uh, and what we would change and talked about some tips and tricks. What I think is good about planner gang and planner life is that it's a lot like looking at your bank account. Like when you're scared to look at your bank account, I'm sure you've had that moment. You're scared to like know the truth about something. And I think a little bit planner life is like that. Like, I think the reason we avoid it is because we're scared to, like, see the truth in black and white or colorful gen- gel pen colors that we've chosen. You're scared to see, like, what it is you said you wanted to do versus what you actually did. But I'm finding it really useful to also write down, like, well, but here's what I actually did. Like, I might not have done that thing that I said was my priority for the day, but here are the 10 things that I actually did. And it's also useful to be honest, to be like, I didn't accomplish what was my priority for the day. And like, by the way, I don't even have 10 things to write down. So like, whatever. I I guess, wait, I don't understand planner life. Like, so you write down like, what, what? like what you want to do that day? I do. Well, I've been doing it, uh, as I said, in the little meeting to our friends that joined us. Like I have been writing down like things that I want to accomplish and then I try to prioritize them for certain days. But then I actually go back and write down like what I did accomplish and what I actually did do. Because sometimes I'm beating myself up for like... You didn't do the one thing that you said you wanted to do. But then when I sit down at the end of the day and I'm like, yeah, you're such a jerk. You didn't do that one thing. But then I'm like, oh, but here's what I did do. Like I had a phone call with a friend who really needed to talk. And I took care of a number of clerical things. So it's almost like like a diary kind of. Almost. I'm using it more like a journal than just strictly a planner. And I'm pretty happy about it so far. We'll see if it sticks. But also one thing good about it, we've had this long talk about like implementing systems in your life and in your house. This is one thing where it's all me. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it's all me and it's all ideas and structures that I'm trying to give myself. And so if I succeed at it, the credit is all mine. And if I don't succeed as well as I want to at it, then there's nothing really else I can blame except for that maybe what I decided and set out to do wasn't right for me. But there are so few things that any of us have that are really just all ours. And so it's nice to just have a thing that's like 
just for me. And it's nice to, you know, have friends to talk with about it and share tips about like stickers and pens and stuff. It's very like Lisa Frank, Trapper Keeper vibes, you know? I had to love that. Maybe I need to get in this planner life. Maybe. One thing I think is good is like a lot of people are just getting their planners now. Like they're not like, oh, I didn't start on January 1st, so now I can't do it at all. And I have to wait until January 1st, 2025. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, I just got a planner at Aldi. It costs $5. I'm starting, you know, mid-January and great. Like no big. Like that's a thing that always trips me up is that like that perfectionism that comes with a lot of like our uh neurodivergent yes yes ways that perfectionism isn't really it's it's not really about like being afraid to make a mistake it's it's about like being afraid to almost do anything like it's very it can be very paralyzing and negating and there is like something very wonderful about just writing something messily down and it's not perfect and it's only ever for me to see there's something good about it i think it's going to be something good for me and i'm going to try really hard to keep it up so i'm i'm proud of that i like this I also, though, use my iPhone calendar, my iCal or whatever. Yes. yes. And I worry that it would be too many things. That's a possibility. I think knowing yourself is really part well, of honey, the... honey, it's the secret of it all. Yeah, part of the thing. I bought a little photo printer that has been super fun for me. It's somewhere. Um, but it prints out like mini photos um, instead of doing like mind maps, which is what my planner suggests. I don't even know what a mind map is really. Oh, people I need... talk about that. I have no fucking idea people what it is. But do. Yes, people and do. And even talk when I still it. looked it up, I was like, I don't know if mind maps are me. But little photos of my little coats, I've been printing out and putting in that spot. So I think, again, well... We were talking about how beneficial school will be for Birdie, like getting to know herself and how great that job was that time for Eli to get to know himself and know what, Mm -hmm. you know, I still feel like I'm getting to know myself a little bit and like what I will do and what I won't do. But what I won't do this time is feel like a piece of shit because I didn't fill out my planner the right way. Like I'm not, I'm not about that anymore. I've been down that road too many times. So, you know. You have to do whatever is right for you, but I'm having I'm having fun. And if your phone calendar works for you, that's amazing. I mean, I don't know if it works. For, you, know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but you love a little journal, so you know maybe it's not a planner. Maybe it's just like a little I do journal. Love a notebook. I love a little journal. I don't know. I could get into that. I could get into that life. I think. I think I could get into it. Well. I think we're going to meet again in another month to check in with each other and uh, I'll let you know how... I may need you to like give me a tutorial, my own personal Zoom tutorial. All right. I'll do it. You know, I'll do it. I'll put it in my planner. (laughs) What are you doing your best at this week? Um, I don't know. I, I think I am kind of like, uh, just kind of doing my best at like, do just get, just getting through it and uh, allowing for um, like enjoyment of the good stuff and not making it feel like it's like now I've got to do something you know whatever um, and I feel like I yeah I feel like I I was I've been doing good at that um, yeah. I feel like that. I'm good at that. <laughs> and you got that sinus thing for free. I got that sinus thing for free. That was so exciting. I, for a second, I did think you were, I forgot what had just transpired. And I thought you were talking about my sinus infection. And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> you did. I guess you I could mean, say that. I mean, you did free. get that for free. Yeah, sure. You've never paid for a sinus infection. I've really not. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've paid. You know You've what I mean? Paid. I have definitely paid dearly. Yeah. Yeah, for my but the infection issues. itself is always, always free of charge. Free, free of charge. <laughs> um, 
I'm trying not to like freak out about anything, I guess, is my, is my current state. Yeah. That feels new. I'm like, feel like a lot of the stuff I sort of have been working on in the last year in terms of relationship stuff with like dating, I feel like a lot of it sunk in and I'm feeling like very free of like, I don't know, feeling like, I don't know, like I have to be out in the world dating people all the time. Like, I don't fucking care. It's right. impossible anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I understand now why people, I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to be chill about things, man. <laughs> Here's, I'm doing my best at being chill. I think that's good. Part. And I think And that, myself. Just chill in myself. Yeah. I think it's good because, well, what I want to say is that you have been through a lot. And I know the whole time you're like, everybody's going through a lot and I'm going through a lot. The beauty of going through a lot, if you could even say that, that there's like a beautiful side to it, is that you literally have lived through the worst. You know what I mean? So like the freak out that you would have had a year ago about something suddenly is just like, no, like, you know, it, it's not worth the time nor the energy, especially not the time. You know, especially not the time. Again, I'm excited about work stuff. I have a couple things I'm like, I feel as though I need to like creatively get working a little bit. Yeah. And it's hard because again, it's like I do feel a bit like I sometimes am not as supported as I need in terms of like practical help in my life like I can like name like and maybe this is where planner gang is like where it lives like maybe I need this you know yeah but like I can right now tell you like seven things in this fucking apartment that like I would like to get done Mm -hmm. you know yeah um but also like I need to finish this treatment for a tv thing that I've been working on like I need to finish that this in the next three days. Yeah. I have to finish that. And then I need to like transcribe my outline for uh, the movie for senior trip. And I'm meeting with my new reps to discuss like how we want to go about that. Cause like if I pitch it, then I don't need to, but I don't know if I want to pitch it anyway, whatever. Um, You know, I have like actual work stuff too. The problem is I don't feel like I have enough support or help in like home organization stuff that like makes me crazy. So I'm like, I cannot focus creatively until I get like these things fucking settled here. But that's just, these are just time wasters. Do you know what I mean? Like in a way, it's a time suck. Yes. And then you're exhausted. And then I'm like, well, I'm not, I can't work now. Now I'm too tired. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And there are also things that sometimes maybe we use to avoid the creative things that... Well, of course. I mean, Mark, I, we would, I would always joke with Mark that he has to get to the end of the internet before he starts writing. Right. Like, I'll be yeah. like, how's the internet? Are you almost to the end of it? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know... Yeah, he, because it's true. Like there yeah. is a certain process that people have, and like you and I have talked about this too. Like I don't believe in that like fucking thing that some people say. This is for people who aren't whose brains just work differently. Of like write every day, have you know you have to like have that kind of uh like regimented you know work ethic. When you're right, when you're writing, and like that shit did not work for me. It didn't work when I wrote my book. It didn't work. Right. It doesn't work when I'm writing, you know, treatments or ideas for like TV or movies. Like it's that's not how I work. Right. I don't. I'm not. I can't sit down and just like fucking fluff a bunch of shit onto a piece of paper that's going to be worth anything. But I do. There are like 
there are like certain procrastination things that I need to do until I can like get to the point where I'm like, oh, okay, I can sit down and do this now. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Uh, yes, it's all part of the process. Like everybody's yeah. got some version of that. I know you do. Girl. 100. And by the way, part of the thing that I think really, what has been hard for me figuring out is like, if I work on a TV show that's like happening every day, I'll write the whole fucking hour before 10 in the morning. It'll right. be done and ready for that person because someone that I respect is expecting. respect again is expecting and counting yeah. on it. And yeah. a bunch of other people are counting on it to get done for their jobs. Yes. But when it's just for me and like it's a casual, not a casual thing, I take it too casually. But when it's for me and like say an agent is waiting to take a look at it or whatever, and they're like, okay, whenever. I'm like, if you don't tell me that like somebody's job is on the fucking line. Yeah. Then, yeah, or that they've paid you, and here's your paycheck, and you owe this work to us. Like, right. That's why selling things is so valuable to all. Right. Like, like, honestly, I think all. I think a lot of fucking writers work that way. Right. Is is that they are you're motivated? That's what. That's what the money is for. <laughs> The it's, money is the motivation. The money is the motivation. And also like in a weird way, it's not even like you're rewarded for something and then you feel worthy. It's almost like no. the opposite of it. Yes. It's almost like the money puts fear in me that somebody's going to be like, you're not fucking worth this money that yeah. I paid you. Yeah. Give I never want someone to say that to me. So I'm going to be worth it. Totally. I'm, I'm with you. I got it. That's, but I'm the same way. We're and not so, alone. No, we're not. And so writing for me in this in this way that like this generating my own work way has always been really hard for me. It's why I work best with like a partner who does not work the same way I do. Yeah. Um, but this TV show thing like that I'm working on, like I have to fucking do, no one else yeah. can do it. I have to do Honestly, it. Honestly, Busy, you know what I was thinking when you were saying that you have to get this done in three days? I was like... Look in your phone, think of who your favorite doctor is, call the receptionist and ask if you can sit at the desk next to her and bang out the... I guarantee you'd be done in four hours. Well, it is funny because I, you know, when I wrote the book, and if you guys followed the journey years ago, 2017, 2018, right? It came out in the fall of 2018, whatever. Guys... <sighs> When I wrote that book, I realized fairly quickly that I had to be somewhere other than my home. Like I yeah. could not work in my home. I had to work. And there were like three coffee places that I worked best at. And actually a while back, Jenny Mullen introduced me to a woman that has this workspace close by that she was like, you can come check it out. And if you like it, you know, maybe I can give you like a little free trial membership for a while, Yeah, which would be amazing. Maybe I need to call that lady up. See, but this is procrastinating. This is one more thing. I just need to fucking do it. <laughs> You're in. I'll just call. I feel like just, for uh, me, conditions must be perfect, which is like, that's, you know, it has, I have to be like near people, but they can't be too interesting. I have to not be interested in what they're doing, but I can't be at home. It can't be those people. Right. And here there are 4,000 yes. things that I see that I'm like, ugh. Better do They're that. They're driving Better my brain. That. Yeah, that's like, that's occupying space in my brain. Like, yeah, in LA, it was like Le Pan Quotidien on Larchmont. With the I big long there. tables. Yeah, I would, but the one on Larchmont had good light. I would sit there. There was a coffee commissary. It doesn't exist anymore at the Siren Studios on Sunset. I would mm -hmm. work there a ton. Yeah. I wrote a ton of my book there. I wrote some of my book at the coffee commissary on Fairfax. But that one on Sunset, I think, was like where I wrote the most. I think I yeah. thank them in my book, literally. <laughs> I wrote an entire book commuting on the Metro North train every day. And it 
I did it really fast. Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to go back and forth on a train somewhere every day. Why don't you take that train out here? <laughs> Just train across the country and finish your screenplay while you're on your way. <laughs> oh my gosh. At least the screenplay is the closest to being finished of anything. I have like three things that I want to finish and that's in my planner too. So hopefully I'll get my shit together enough to do it. That one's tricky because I think it's also like, it's all the emotional stuff of just being like a writer and like considering yourself legit and respecting the work that you're trying to do enough. But then also like that screenplay is a personal thing yeah, yeah. that, and, and so yeah. that it's like a double layered uh, yeah, but, thing. You know, that I want to finish I, it. I, I always try to remember just the terrible drafts of things I've read by men. I just try, you know, like yes. deeply, pers- d- deeply personal yeah. s- screenplays and things that are just so barely written. Yeah, um, you're so out, right. But out in the world, but, but fucking out in the world because they're just like, I just threw up on this piece of paper. That's good enough. Like somebody <laughs> is going to, obviously. That's great. You're so you're, you are 100% right. That is a thing that I, I would like to crack that nut in this lifetime of just being able to be like, I know this isn't perfect and I know it's, it's not enough. finished. Yeah. But good enough. Yeah. But here, here it is for what it's worth. And like, if, you know, I know that the fear is that the fear is that nobody will care. You know, it's not even that people will hate it. It's that people will just not care. Right. But nobody cares now anyway, because there's nothing exactly, to care about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I know. Exactly. I get it. Guys, a creative pursuit. <laughs> Very tricky. It's very tricky. And then and 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 then we have to have the big talk about what success means because we all know like get actually getting something made is like one in a million. It's so funny. <clears throat> I didn't again, didn't watch the awards, but multiple people texted me because they know that I'm friends with Gillian Jacobs and Chris Storer. Yeah. And they were like, wait, so does Chris just not go to any of these awards? Even though <laughs> like the bear is just sweeping and winning everything. Like yeah. They just let Maddie just is the voice. Like he's the other producer isn't going, the other producer, whatever. I mean, Chris created, this is Chris's show. Baby, this is his yeah. baby, his job. Yes. Like he created the show. Yeah. He writes it. He produces it. He directs it. He's incredible. And I'm like, yeah, I think he kind of doesn't just, I don't know. I feels like he kind of just is like, doesn't need to go to those awards. Right. Which is rad. It's so rad because you know what it tells me? He's doing it because he loves it so much. He He loves the making Mm -hmm. of it so much. Mm -hmm. And nothing else even means anything to him besides getting to like make this thing. And like I have met him once or twice through you and I love Gillian. Um, And she's creative in this same way too. She's like, she's like a, a, kind of unicorn in Hollywood, I think, because she just is really passionate about, like, the ideas and the the thinking of ideas and, like, how good they could be. And, and I think she, like, accepts the reality of what Hollywood is, you know, really well in, like, a really healthy way. But, like, I love talking to her because, like, what excites her never is the parties or the dresses or the money even. Like, what excites her are the ideas both large and small. That's where she really, like, gets this light in her eyes. And that's why she's such a delight to watch on screen is because she's, like, on fire because of the idea. And I love that about her. (sighs) So I guess the point is, though, like, when you're sort of, like, end result-oriented, that, like, can't be the motivating factor. You know what I mean? Right. At the same time, you got to just get shit done. Like, you have to do it. Yeah. And then know that there's room for improvement. And not give too many caveats. Like, there's room for improvement here. Just... Yeah. I mean, anything... Hand it over. Be be open. Improved. Yeah. Everything can be improved. Right. I'm just like, I'm just also talking for myself right now. Yeah. 
I mean, listen, here's, I'll be honest, in my 40s is when I finally got over the feeling of this will be the last idea that I ever have. Like, I finally know that that's not true. There will always be another idea. Oh, I've never, I've never had that issue. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, I have, I have a million good ideas every day. (laughs) (laughs) I always have two. I've always been. I'm sorry, my shit's creek. Musical idea is fucking brilliant. (laughs) I think it's brilliant. I feel like I've always had a million ideas. So the idea that I would think this is the last idea I'll ever have is absurd and insane. But those are the hoops we make ourselves jump through, you know? Yeah. And I'm finally just getting over that. And it's like, you know, and, and I take some responsibility myself, obviously, but also, you know, we've been through things that have made us like not trust the process as much as we could. We have not been encouraged when uh when other people, well, I'll be honest, in the 1990s, I saw guys my age who I don't know, maybe they had the same talent as me. Maybe they had less. Maybe they had more. But I saw guys that seemingly had no fucking interest in doing what I wanted to do pulled out of obscurity and put up on a pedestal and celebrated and encouraged. And then, like, I was told so many times, like, don't get ahead of yourself. Slow your roll. Know your place. And so, like, I carry that. I carry that with me, you know. And and some people have... Um, yeah, even... okay. I mean, also, I was going to say, in the 20 teens, yeah, I was, like, after seeing so many actors, male actors who work in TV, like, make a successful jump to directing television. Right. And I got to direct... Cougar Town and I was directing some like little short commercial things that for myself that I was in for brands. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'd like to do more of this. And literally like Liz Merriweather was like, you should come direct New Girl. She's the showrunner of fucking New Girl. Like it's yeah. whatever. And I, the guy, at, they wouldn't approve me at Fox. They would not approve me to yeah. direct because why? When like so many like just like Josh or you know, <laughs> I'm not saying a specific I'm just like a guy named Josh. A guy like, named Josh. A or guy named Adam or like Greg <laughs> or Yeah, Greg. Yeah, whoever. Like, the, those guys are just like yeah. come come this way, sir. Please direct this episode of television. That was actually one of my favorite jokes of Chel- from Chelsea. Was about Greta. Was Greta about the Barbie. joke about yeah. Barbie, which was like such a fucking good joke, which is that like that's how you do it, right? You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Was it was just like saying like Barbie grossed over a billion dollars or something, making such it's like, the, the most historic success yeah. by a woman a female director. director. It's like in it's history. The, in the history. Um, and she's like, and now Hollywood executives are really asking themselves, do you think she could direct? Another one. Do you should think, we I mean, give like, her a second think, chance? Should we, should we give her a second chance? Sorry. Yeah, I ruined the punchline, guys. I jo- I Joe coyed it or whatever. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. But that was such... Yeah, you're right. That was such a good joke. Do you joke. think we should give her a second chance? And it's so fucking true. It's so true. And it's a conversation that we've had a million times on this podcast. But... And here's the real tragedy of it for me personally, is that because of how I am... I would honestly wonder if I was imagining this, I would Mm. wonder, am I just making excuses? Am I just imagining that I was held back because I was a woman? And the truth is, I just don't have what it takes. And I'm, I'm just blaming the easiest thing. I would honestly believe that if someone hadn't said to me, I am sorry, I participated in doing this to you. I would yeah. I would have gaslit myself about yeah. being gaslit about this stuff if someone hadn't said I could have done better by you and I chose not to just because I don't even have a really good reason for it. And I'm like I know what the reason is and I knew it all along, but I never would have just like solidly believed it if this person that I really looked up to hadn't been like I didn't do what I should have done for you. You know? 
Yeah, and even that fucking bums me out that it that yeah, you needed the like, validation oh, okay. from like, a man. <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that And sucks. then I'm like, okay, but he, here I am. And I'm like, you know, here I am now. So what do I do with he, where I am now? You know? I guess you get on that fucking train. Get on the just, train, I guess. You just gotta drive, you just gotta train across country, right? <laughs> right. Finish it, finishing that fucking screenplay. I'll All go right. to Travel Town much- at Griffith Park and just take that train around. Oh my God, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and actually, please do that and send me a picture. Um, <laughs> All, All right, right. Speaking of which, we love you. Whatever you've been procrastinating, or maybe you're listening to this and doing, being very productive right now. And I hope that that's true for which you good and for, for me. Good for you. Not bitter about you. it at all. Mm-mm. <laughs> Come to the sale. New York yeah. City, Cure Thrift, February 10th and 11th. Casey's going to be training across country on her way here in the next few <laughs> weeks. So <laughs> you can see if you can catch her at any of the stops. Um, and I don't know. Let us know what you think we could be more mediocre like a man. <laughs> at. And what you're doing, you're best at and yes. how you're how you're handling it all. We're open to suggestions. We want always, hear. always open. All right, guys. Have a good day. Have a good week. And we'll talk to you very soon. Love you. Bye. Oh, no.